In this video you will learn what are solid principles and how to use them in JavaScript. And a lot of people for some reason think that solid is something super old, we don't need it nowadays and we don't need to learn what is it at all. This is entirely wrong. First of all, you can get questions regarding solid principles in interviews really often. Secondly, solid principles is the base of good programming, doesn't matter what language we are talking about. Which actually means every single developer must understand these principles and remember about them every single day. So what is solid? These are five different principles which are starting with the letter of this word. So it is S, O, L, I and D. Let's start from the S. So S means that we must work with single responsibility principle. What does it mean? If we have a module, there should be only one actor which is changing it. What does it mean? For example, as you can see on this example, we have a class to do list. This is our module. We have some methods inside and data, like for example, these items. And then we have methods like add item, remove item and to do string. This is totally normal. This is a class with a single responsibility which works with the entity to do list. When it is a bad architecture, if here we add two new methods, save to file and load from file. These two methods are completely unrelated to our to do list at all, they are related to working with the database. Which actually means we brought here a single responsibility principle by throwing things which are not related to this entity inside our class. What is a good solution here? We can create a new class, for example, database manager, and we can move these two methods inside this class. In this case, we correctly implemented single responsibility principle. We are working with to-do list entity inside to-do list class, and we are working with database and connection to the database inside our database manager. The second letter is O and this is an open closed principle. What does it mean? Our module must be opened for extension but closed for modification. What does it mean? Here we have a class Coder and as you can see we are getting lots of properties inside this constructor. Now here we have an additional class Coder filter and we are implementing different methods to filter our data. We are providing inside our coders and we filter them by full name, by language and by hobby. And this is actually breaking of this principle. Why is that? Because every single time when we're getting a new property, we must create here a new filter function. Which actually means we must modify our existing code inside Coder filter every single time when we're making changes inside data of the Coder. This is a bad approach. Instead, we can implement this filter to be filter agnostic. We can remove here all these methods and just create filter by prop. And this is a method where we're getting some array, property name that we want to filter and the value. And now here inside we can just return our array dot filter and we're getting inside every single element and we want to take element prop name and compare it with the value. First of all, this method can work with any property that we are passing, doesn't really matter. If we are taking here full name, language, hobby, education, whatever, this method will cover them all and we don't need to create any additional methods for additional property. Additionally to that, as you can see here, I wrote here not coders but array, because essentially we can apply this code to any array at all, which actually means we can even rename our coder filter to just filter class, and then it will be even more shareable. The next one is Liskov substitution principle. What does it mean? If you have a method which works for the base type, it must also work for derived type. I'm sorry for interruption, but I just want to let you know that I have a membership here on the channel that you can join to support me. It will give you access to the new videos earlier, emojis and priority replies to your comments. Let's look on the example. Here I have a class rectangle, where inside constructor we are getting width and height and we are saving them inside two properties. We also have two getters for width and for height and we have two setters for width and for height. And here we have an additional method getArea, which multiplies width and height. After this we have a square class, which extends our rectangle, and we simply call inside constructor super, where we are providing size and size, which actually means inside rectangle we are providing width and height, and inside square we just provide the size because it is the same. So Liskov principle means that inside our children classes all methods must work exactly the same like in the parent if they are not overwritten. 
And here is the problem. As you can see, we are calling new square. This is our child class, and we are providing size two inside. After this, we are calling square dot width equals three. It will call this function from the parent. And after this, we are console logging get area. As you can see in browser, we are getting six, but essentially we wanted to get nine. Why it happens? Because with this logic, we overrode just width, but not height which actually means we broke our principle and we implemented our child class incorrectly. Because with correct implementation, assigning width or height to other value must update both of them. What does it mean? After constructor, we can create here a setter, width, we are getting here a value, and it must overwrite inside this width and then the height. And in the same way, we must implement height. So both setters must overwrite width and height. Let's check it again. Now we're getting nine and this is the correct implementation because all methods of the parent are working correctly for the children. The next principle is for letter I and it is interface segregation principle. What does it mean? If your class is implementing some interface, it should not be forced to implement it if it is not needed. And actually inside JavaScript, we don't have interfaces at all. This is why I am showing this example with the TypeScript. And as you can see here, first of all, we defined our interface, vehicle interface. And here we're getting two methods, drive and fly. And we're getting our class future car, where we create these two methods, drive and fly, and we're writing implements vehicle interface. So our class must implement this interface. But now we're doing exactly the same for the car and airplane. And essentially we're not getting any errors at all. But it happens because our class is forced to implement vehicle interface, which actually means we are not just implementing drive method here, we must implement fly method. If we don't implement it, we are getting an error. Class car incorrectly implements interface vehicle interface. But essentially it is wrong, our car class does not need fly method at all. And the same with airplane. We don't need here drive method, we just need here fly method. How we can refactor this code? We simply need to split our interfaces. First of all, we need here car interface, and then we have here drive, and secondly, we need here airplane interface, and we will have only fly here. After this, our future car can implement first of all car interface, and after this airplane interface. And now our car can just use car interface, and our airplane is using airplane interface. In this case, our classes are just using interfaces that are needed, not what forced. And obviously here we can remove from the car fly method and from the airplane drive method. And now our classes are not forced to implement interfaces that they don't need. And the last one is D. This is dependency inversion principle. What does it mean? High level modules should not be dependent on low level modules. Let's have a look on the example. Here I have a class file system with method write to file, class external DB with method write to database, and local persistence with method push. After this, we have a class persistence manager with just a single method save data. We are getting here some DB and data. And then we are checking what is DB. If it is an instance of file system, we are writing to file. If it is an instance of external DB, we are writing to the database. In other case, we are pushing to local storage. In this case, our persistence manager is our high level module and file system external DB and local persistence are low level modules. And our high level class is tightly binded to all these three classes, which actually means we are breaking a principle again. And in order to solve this problem, we can name all these methods the same. For example, inside file system, it's a save, external DB, it's a save, and local persistence, it is also a save. Now our persistence manager can implement save data, where we're getting dbn data, and after this we simply call db.save and we're providing some data inside. In this case our persistence manager knows nothing about our low level classes. It simply calls some method on the db that is provided inside and this is it. And actually, if you're interested to know how to create reusable components in all frontend frameworks, make sure to check this video also.